good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Tuesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope everybody's just making the best of their week and in their best possible position they could be. I know that's not a reality for everybody, but that's what I hope. If you could please hit the like button, if you could please hit the subscribe button and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link will be in the description of this video. So what's up, what's up, what's up? How you guys doing? How's everybody doing on Tuesday night? I know it's a work night. It's probably not a whole lot going on. But I hope each and everyone that watches this video had a great day. And uh, like I said, uh, no time for negativity. You know what I mean? It's all about positivity. If you have a bad day, you forget about it, you keep moving. But today's not about that. Today, we are going to go back to Millhaven Institution. Now, I never did any substantial time in Millhaven. But when I first started doing pen time, you went through assessment unit in Millhaven, M-A-U, Millhaven Assessment Unit. And it was an old jail, although not that old, it looked old and it felt old. The energy is old, the en energy is stale and the energy is not good. It's a negative feel when you walk down that long hallway. There's a long hallway that you gotta walk through and there's signs talking about body fluid spills. It's crazy, right? Then you get in and everybody starts telling you the stories about the body bag. You gotta buy your own body bag. So you gotta have $80 in your account. So if somebody kills you, that $80 pays for the body bag. Now, it's kinda true. It's not $80 for the body bag. It's $80 for you to get out with. But if you happen to get killed, that $80 will buy your body back. Now, I remember the first time I went through MAU. It was more chill than the second time. The first time is a lot of veteran guys, although I did see scraps. There was one day, literally a few days when I walked in, there's a sick one-on-one -on -one right in the middle of the gym with wrestling and power slams. Just a really good fight. I saw a lot of people jumped and attacked. But I never really saw a knife play. I never really saw anybody get poked up. And uh, that never really happened until I went to Millhaven Assessment Unit. Now, the first time I went through there, and then the first time I went through, um, like, all of it, TD Unit and all that, was one thing. But the second time I went through MAU... It was a much different crowd. It was a more high energy crowd. It was a younger crowd. And it was, let's be honest, it was more gang members and just more place for violence. And I saw one guy literally get his face buck 50 to dirty gash, sleeper hold, buck 50 down his face, just cooked over a phone. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. I, I realized how serious the pen was, not just because of the type of violence, but also the response to violence. Like when you're in provincial, if you're fighting, if you're scrapping, if somebody's getting stabbed, if somebody's getting attacked, as soon as the guards know what's going on, in most cases, unless, you know, there's some shady shit going on, they're coming and they don't care. They're going to bring the squirrel squad. They're going to bring gas. They're going to come and they're going to you up until you stop. Well, in the pen, it's different. Now, if you are in the yard of a high security penitentiary where guards in the rifle tower are armed and you are open trying to kill somebody in open range, they definitely have M16s and they definitely will shoot you if it's your life or somebody else's. That's a fact. It may happen more often in maximum security because it just, the violence uh, a lot of the time is way more serious, but not always, right? I saw some very serious violence in Joyceville. Just most of it wasn't in the yard. It was inside the prison in some place, whether in the, in the rec gym, which is inside a building, or on the ranges, which is inside a building. But this 
time in MAU. I was walking laps, okay? And I had some friends there. I was a big guy. I was working out a lot. I was jacked. And I, I just really didn't get involved in that stuff. You know, I had a fairly positive attitude. I liked to joke around. And I just didn't really get caught up with the violence and that kind of stuff. I didn't feel like I needed to carry a shank because I didn't put myself in those kind of situations. I didn't feel the need to go borrow a bunch of stuff and run up a bunch of debts and put myself in situations. And the pen is a little different, right? Like in provincial, typically you're gonna get sucked into something, right? Whether it's people just messing around, it gets out of hand, or people just decide to target you because they're bored, or you know, you just get in a beef with somebody. That's a reality. But in the pen, typically, it's not like that. Typically, if it's gonna go up, it's gonna go up to somebody getting poked. And if it's not that serious, it's gonna just be left, right? When you're in the lower security pens, you will see fights. But when you're in the higher security pens, you don't see many of them. You see a lot of arguments that are almost fights. You see guys that are supposed to be dogs kicking off argumentatively and destroying friendships. But typically you don't see a lot of one-on-one -on -one fist fights. You might see somebody get jumped and like boot, you know what I boot fucked. But in the pen, typically people get poked. And I remember I was walking the yard this day in MAU and it's a big yard, right? And it's, when you're out in that yard, you know you're in the system. There's huge rifle towers, big razor wire fences. The prison just looks like a high security prison and you feel like you're in it when you're there. And I remember I'm walking laps and everybody walks the same direction. You don't go against the grain. It's just kind of expected that way. And right in front of me, maybe a hundred meters, I see a bunch of guys walking and then this other guy walking. I see a confrontation. I see what looks like a fight. It looks like somebody getting jumped. And all of a sudden, all you smell is copper. Is copper. And I realized that day that that smell of somebody getting poked up. And in the pen, I, the violence is so bad that you actually go through smelling all kinds of weird things when guys get jumped or boop. You see, you smell shit and like guys, oh, it's really bad. And then when guys get poked, you get that iron copper smell and it kind of lingers. It's hard to kind of get it out of your mind. But I'll tell you what, this guy got poked up, I would say a bunch of times because if he's getting poked and those weren't punches, then he was getting poked a lot, you know? And this guy champed it out. He, he didn't pull no goof move. He stayed out in the yard Till the very last person, no intervention by staff, despite the fact that it was right in the middle of the yard. And he stayed out there till the very last guy. So nobody got pinched. They didn't check anybody's hands before everybody went inside. He took it like a champ and went in last and they pulled him out. Now, once you start seeing people get stabbed up in prison, Stuff gets real, real quick. And then your mind changes and you go into a mindset of being ultra militant, hyper aware, and quite honestly, you can get paranoid. The tension can make you paranoid, especially if you're smoking chronic. Whew. It's chronic and weed at, uh, chronic in prison at high tension times. I mean, you're still going to smoke it, but you're going to feel like everybody's watching and like I said, I saw a guy in MAU literally get his face hacked open. I saw another guy sitting against the wall, just getting his face punted off as he's laying there unconscious, blood just spraying everywhere, right by the cage, right at the front cage of wreck. Zero intervention. Now what happens in the penitentiary? If you if you're out in the middle of the yard and you get stabbed and they feel like the yard could become a hostile situation, they're not going to come until everybody's inside. They're not going to put themselves at risk. They're going to wait until it is safe for them. And I, I, I've seen guys out in the yard for hours after getting hurt. And I've heard stories about guys literally having to pick 
guys who have been poked up up and carry them to the cage and drop them there because the feds won't come in. I know when you go to prison, you're supposed to be safe. And in most cases, you will be. But you also got to be on point at all times and aware of every decision you make. Because one wrong word to the wrong person can put you in a bad situation and you don't even know who your enemies are. You know, I've seen prison get real scary for guys who have no idea why. You know, I told the story already of that guy who lived in the cell beside me in Joyceville, who got stabbed up a bunch of times and was screaming like, Why? Why? Help! Ah! Right? He doesn't know what's going on. He's caught up in something that he wasn't prepared for. Not every single person that goes to prison is a super gangster, a super thug, wants to be stabbed, wants to stab, stab somebody, Wants to even be put in a situation where that might be an outcome, right? So, every now and then you'll see that. But this guy, I respect him, man. He took it like a champ, didn't make a noise. I didn't hear a scream. I didn't hear a nothing. And I was probably only 100 meters away. And then he literally stood at the back of the yard and waited. Now, I don't know what the outcome of it was. But I know that I saw people around still, right? And I'm not, I don't think it was like a kill shot kind of thing. I don't think anybody was trying to kill anybody. I think it was a, a, a message. But still, seeing that right in front of you when, you. when you're in a situation where you are locked up and you feel like somebody's got the upper hand because you don't have a weapon, that's a bad feeling to be in. And like I said, I went through the penitentiary all my time without ever worrying about carrying a shank, but I always knew where there was one. I got in a scrap with a guy myself that ultimately probably would have stabbed me if I didn't have my homie there and we didn't tell him like, bro, you ain't going to the block. It's not happening. You're going to come, you're going to talk and we're going to sort this out. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys, so you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. People are going to go to prison. I understand that. Like, times are tough, and it doesn't matter if you're an addict, if you just don't have what you need to support your family, or if you're just greedy. It doesn't matter. People are going to go to jail or prison. And my channel is to at least help people be prepared so when they go in, they're not totally green and 100% clueless of what to expect. And that way they don't shake up the vibe of the block. They have an, an understanding of what's going to be expected of them. And what behaviors are going to be expected. And then that way everybody's in a better situation. The guys inside get guys coming in prepared. And these guys go in prepared. And they're not going to be in unnecessarily dangerous positions. Now... Most people will go through their time without ever getting into any real violent conflicts. Maybe you'll get in a scrap or two, but you just never know, right? So think wisely. If you could please hit that like button, if you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. There's a link in the description of this video. I saw a lot of people get stabbed and it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. It's sad, right? Like, typically people are just trying to go home. Nobody's going to prison, typically, to hurt people. Now, there are, you know, people that, that don't follow that. Like, do literally want to hurt people. But that's rare, right? In most cases, you're going to just do your time and you're going to go home. But it all depends on you, the decisions you make, the behaviors you have, and the way you carry yourself. And that's the best advice I can give anybody on here. Love each and every one of you. The new Mac.